I've always thought of ERP, at least how I've tried to approach it, is what can I do to assist you in removing things from your life that interfere interfere with you living within your culture in the best way possible? Mm -hmm. And OCD definitely does that, mm -hmm. right? Oh, that prayer wasn't right, so you're going to hell. <sighs> or, ooh, you gave them a, a look maybe, and that maybe you should go back and apologize, like a moral scrupulous kind of thing or, mm -hmm. or, or whatever it might be, even to racism things. And did I give a slight to someone or something like that? And, and yeah, if I can just help people be <laughs> not like everyone else, but be comfortable almost being mm -hmm. like everyone else and, and not having to go to that next level where OCD, uh, I've always said this, OCD says everyone else is here and, and, and you got to be here to be equal to oh. everybody else, right? That's also <laughs> what society says to people. Literally, wow, you, like you twice. Took my, you took my take right there, <laughs> Sarah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right there. That's literally yeah. what we grow up here. And you got to yes. work twice as hard to be half as good because, not because it's true of humans, but because the system doesn't really want you to be okay. Uh, the way things are set up is that you do have to work extra, extra, extra hard to get the same amount of, you know, recognition and I remember my dad would say whatever he said as a elder black man from <laughs> spending his summers in the south watching his dad step off and say no sir yes sir to just oh, random people gosh. in the streets yeah, yeah. so he, he had very strong thoughts and and they were right you know about how to get through this world by the time I came along things were different I was like daddy things are different now you know I, I certainly gave it a good try and <laughs> it took experiencing it for me to say wow like this stuff is really it's really embedded into people and their souls and the choices that they make and to the systems that we set up, you know? Um, so, um, yeah, this is all very emotional. So sometimes I get lost in it. I, I think of a video I saw, and I don't know if you've seen this one, but mm -hmm. there's about 50 people lined up. Mm -hmm. They're white, black, Hispanic, Asian, everybody. Mm -hmm. And it's an exercise and we're going to run. And mm -hmm. this goes to athletics piece where you were going as well too. Mm -hmm. And he talks about if we started this race, everybody's on the same line. Uh, Who do you think? Do you know where I'm going? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But first of all, if you were raised in a family that have both parents take two steps forward, mm -hmm. and and you see now, and and just by the time that he goes through these things, mm -hmm. there's people almost already at the finish line. Absolutely, <laughs> you know? absolutely. And then you look back and you're like. Oh, jeez. And, and to me, I mean, that video is one of the most powerful representations of what you are describing. Yeah. About how are we set up to succeed? And what is the extra effort that so many people have to do just to try to be equal to everybody else? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right? And so mm -hmm. if OCD is also there exacerbating it, mm -hmm. you know, saying... Mm -hmm you have to be 17 times as good to be just as good as everyone else. Yeah. And then that's also reflected in society. That is then our job, our complex job as therapists to come in and validate that, to try to say the OCD is wrong, but also say that their experience is right and get them these extra special tools, you know, sharpen their existing tools really um, to get them to figure out how they're going to navigate because we all still must navigate. We all mm -hmm. still must. And I say this to my clients a lot too, that we're existing at the vanguard. You know, this is the first time in history. Like I think in, in the 1970s is when women first could get like bank accounts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like we, I can't even imagine. Like I, I, I wouldn't have had a bank account. Right. What was I supposed to do? <laughs> well, you have to ask your husband, of course. Well, where do you get husbands? <laughs> <laughs> just, nobody yeah. gets married anymore. Yeah. And then, mean, but it's ridiculous. Yeah. It, yeah, I mean, it's just... It's it, very ridiculous. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So mm -hmm. society as a whole really only right now sort of lets me have things that I want. Like if you, you know, if you're fortunate enough to have been able to go to college, which is not the norm where I come from. So if you jump through all these hoops, you can maybe have more... You know, um, uh, 
we are living at the vanguard. And so by being right here right now and you deciding right now how you want to live in this generation, your parents had different choices, your grandparents had different choices and on and on and on. But right now, choosing to face this OCD gives you the opportunity to, to build the toolkit and gives you the opportunity to live in, in maybe brand new ways. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because if there is something that we have a really effective treatment for and we can remove something that is getting in the way of your life, wouldn't that be so advantageous to anybody? Absolutely. Whatsoever. Absolutely. It's like if you add, you know, adding that whole uh, race that you just talked about where Mm -hmm. everybody's at the starting line. Yeah. I don't even think, did they even mention mental health? I don't know that they did, but (laughs) who, if you had a mental health issue, had access to a a therapist, right? Oh my gosh. And could pay for it and and, and all of those kinds of things things. too. That would have put a few people ahead and and they would have just crossed the finish line probably at that point Mm -hmm. before the race even started. So it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's, it's incredibly crucial. And even though it's scary to come into a therapist's office, even though it's scary to try to trust, um, using your voice to advocate and to make sure the person, I mean, I asked this at the very beginning, do you believe in systemic racism? Mm-hmm. If I hear anything other than, yeah, if I hear anything other than a, than a, than a, a lecture <laughs> on how it, it affects clients, then mm-hmm. that's not the person for me. Yeah. Um, speaking up if you feel uncomfortable that someone doesn't have your your same religious background or wanting to know that that person has access to someone who can help them. Like the more you speak up at the beginning in terms of what you need from your therapist, you're in a better position to, to benefit, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, If I, you know, the idea is like, I remember learning this in school. Oh, some people's cultures are against therapy. Uh, no, most people have like a shaman or a, a, a healing person yeah. or you have an astrologer. That's all That's all forms of therapy. Yeah. <laughs> what they're against is the thing where we come in and tell them how bad and wrong they are and, and you know, give them some negative experience. So it's not necessarily that the culture is against therapy. I, I think it's that the culture has, the culture has, has created a protective barrier against us, you know? And the unfortunate side effect of that is that the person, these people suffer more. So I think the more we um, take that equity idea in in mind, um, we as the professionals can work really hard and know we just have to work harder to get our clients of color in the door, to get Mm -hmm. our people with different identities in the door, you know? And that's how we can do our part to help right a lot of these wrongs. 